Hey everybody, Brian McCumber here from Tech Money Talks. I am pumped up because today we have the beast of e-com. Based out of the United Kingdom, we are fortunate to have Harry Coleman as a special guest on the show. He's an international multi-million dollar producer in dropshipping. And for those of you in dropshipping, you should know who he is. And if you don't, then you're missing out big time because he's got mad skills in Facebook advertising and is one of the fastest growing professional drop shippers on the planet. If you're interested in starting an online business to make extra money, you better save this episode in your back pocket and listen to it over and over again because the stories and the tips you're going to learn here will give you the opportunity to quickly launch your own business to help your wallet grow fat. Over the past year, before my eyes, Harry's been crushing it in dropshipping with his innovative approach to Facebook advertising and has been teaching and mentoring others how to successfully do the same. The beast of e-com is the real deal and is one of the most transparent professional dropshippers out there on the internet right now. He has a YouTube channel that is blowing up and has grown over 24,000 subscribers over the past year. Time is money and everyone is looking to get a piece of his time and I'm so happy happy to have him on the show today. Harry, thanks for joining us, man. How's it going? Yeah, it's uh, um, it's a pleasure to be here, Brian. And uh, that intro is <laughs> something that How'd I should I probably do? record. That okay? and, uh, yeah, I should probably record that and say that and everywhere I, I go. But, awesome, uh, brother. I, yeah, I for sure. That, man. Really awesome, man. It. Take it and run with it for sure, man. Hey, Hey, you're doing uh, you're doing a great thing, man. Great, uh, great job with what you're doing. And you know, for the audience, let's give you a chance to kind of share your journey into dropshipping. Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, I've kind of gone full circle from you know being someone who worked kind of nine to five jobs, um, being a university student, and then completely kind of going three sixty and just living what you know people like to call quote unquote laptop lifestyle. Yeah. Um, so so yeah, to, to, to kind of, you know, kind of start with, I've always kind of had like a little bit of a, a side hustle um, going, uh-huh. you know, into things. Um, but my kind of first ever internet sales were uh, were from eBay, you know, kind of selling things oh, on eBay. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. selling things on, on eBay. But it's funny the way I came across dropshipping actually, because I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with a website called Black Hat. Um, forum. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, Black Hat Forum. So, uh, you know, everyone is pretty much, I don't think there's anyone watching, uh, listening to this uh, podcast who hasn't typed in at least once in their life, how to make money online in Google search, right? So uh, I used to do that pretty much most nights and Black Hat Forum was something that I used to go on. Uh, there was all kind of weird and wonderful ways how to make money on there. And there was a thread on there on um, on dropshipping. So some guy had made, I think the title of the thread was something like how I made $10,000 uh, dropshipping, you know, items from AliExpress using Facebook adverts. Uh, so obviously instantly I kind of went through the whole of the thread top to bottom and he was in there answering questions. And um it kind of, you know, I was like, okay, this doesn't sound hard. Uh, you know, it's as simple as finding a product on the AliExpress website, um, yeah. you know, using Facebook ads and connecting it with, you know, other people advertising the product all the way around the world. You don't have to hold inventory. You don't have to have a warehouse. Um, you know, all these sorts of weird and wonderful things. You don't have to have, you know, um, you just have to have an internet connection and a laptop. And pretty much that is yeah. it. So that kind of, you know, sparked my, um, you know, hustler's instinct to just give it a go. And uh, (laughs) from there, I kind of spent tons of time building my website, going and joining Facebook groups. But back at that time, we're talking like in 2016, there wasn't many YouTubers out there, you know, um, putting out content such as myself and the the YouTubes who are out there now, because now it's kind of so accessible. Um, so I was kind of joining Facebook groups back then and trying to learn from, you know, anyone who was kind of doing it because it was not as big as it is now. Um, spent loads of time to cut a long story short, spent loads of time trying to put together a website, finally got a website, tried to learn Facebook adverts and, um, you know, I launched my first store and made no sales whatsoever. (laughs) So yeah, it it, it was a, it was a, a niche website. 
and um it was in a, i was in the nails niche you know so women's um nail accessories nail stamps and you know all these sorts of things which oh, okay. i personally yeah i personally knew nothing about and uh-huh. i was very kind of pigeoned into it because the website was pink i couldn't really advertise anything else and uh yeah i kind of put all the work in and uh yeah made no sales whatsoever and i was advertising i probably blow through about eight hundred dollars uh-huh. um to get just one sale and um, oh wow! Yeah. Once I kind of got that one sale, though, I was the Made happy you a believer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, anyone listen to this? If you actually do get your first sale, you'll know exactly what That's I'm talking about. And yeah. it is the, the <laughs> best, it's the best feeling ever. Um, and then, kind of from there, I shut that store down because I couldn't really advertise anything else. I was finding loads of cool products here, there, and everywhere, uh, but couldn't put them on the site because they didn't really fit anything. The site was pink. It had like you know. It was just basically girly branded and, uh, you know, I couldn't really advertise at the stuff. So I shut that one down and I started to learn about kind of like these general drop shipping stores. And I opened up a general drop shipping store and I was heavy in the pet niche. And that's where my initial first kind of, uh, you know, winners, quote, quote, uh, winners came from. And I just kind of over time got better at finding winning products. I got better at, you know, conversion hacks. I got better at um, finding products scaling adverts and then over time it got to the point where i was doing this and a, a nine to five job um yeah. and then it just come to the point where i was just surpassing you know my income 10x so i just left my job and i'm doing things ever since wow wow man that's awesome and actually let, let's dive a little bit more into that like you know sure. at the point where where you realize you know wow you, i mean you're hitting you know now you figured it out and you're bringing in some real money and and this what's the story behind you know deciding to you know leave your nine to five job yeah for sure so i mean i've always kind of wanted the i mean business there was two things i wanted to be when i grew up it was either a footballer or a business owner those were the only two things i wanted to do (laughs) and kind of football kind of when i got to university you know um late nights drink etc football uh-huh. kind of went down the down the drain so it was kind of like business so um that was the only thing i wanted to do but with business is i always wanted to have something which was that gave me time freedom and yeah. location freedom as well because business yeah. is great i mean you can make a lot of money from a restaurant or from you know brick and mortar stores but you 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 have to be tied to it or you have to employ someone to manage it whereas you know being someone who could just lay in bed and still make money was something that you know always appealed to me so yeah. e-commerce was what i always wanted to do yeah because that's a good but, point because even right there is like you know some traditional businesses sometimes the level of work becomes you know worse than a nine to five job you're working harder and you know twice as hard just uh where you know now the business owns you instead of you owning the business and that happens yeah. way too often but but in this type of you know, e-commerce business and in drop shipping, you know, just like you said, I mean, it, it does take work, but mm-hmm. uh, it's well worth it. And once you get processes in place, you know, it's so efficient and, and, and the rewards that come out of it, it's well worth it. Yeah, hundred percent sure. And you know, the, some people like to call themselves self-employed, but they are literally just another, like, there's a big difference between being self-employed and being a business owner, you know, self-employed people just, they pay themselves essentially, but they're still, an employee for the business if they don't put in work or they don't get up to go and you know if they if they're an electrician a plumber or whatever it may be no offense well, but they have to work to earn their income yeah um yeah. until you become the business owner and can hire people to go out and do the job for you um True. so yeah I, I, the the first kind of success is um came from the kind of the, the the pet niche and like i say the first sales that came in were just the best feeling ever <laughs> um best feeling ever yeah yeah um and then over time you know i used to have my notifications on and bearing in mind at this time i'm still working a nine to five job um but i used to keep the notifications on on my phone uh-huh. um so that they used to kind of ding and, the, and uh, yeah. it used to kind of be the, like the inspiration of, of keep on going because i was smile, tired right? <laughs> yeah and i was like for a whole year i was tired as hell my routine was pretty much um wake up at like half eight wake up at half seven sorry get to work for half eight uh work from half eight till um five 
come home, take a nap because I'll be tired, wake up, eat some food. And then from around about 8 to about 1 a.m., 2 a.m., sometimes 3 a.m. at night, I'll be working on my stores and testing things, finding products. And, and I was doing that for consistently a whole year. Awesome. Um, you know, putting in that work. I took no holidays whatsoever. Um, and like you mentioned, it just don't happen overnight, but people, you know, seem to think it does. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you touched on a really good point. And, and I caught that in on one of your YouTube videos, you know, sharing that. And I think that's awesome because especially, you know, explaining how you were able to, you know, manage your, your nine to five, but then, you know, still make time because you you wanted this and you wanted this lifestyle mm-hmm. and you worked it and you proved it out over the course of a year. And now look at it, you're, you're reaping the rewards, but then, you know, you know, people on the surface will see, you know, crazy numbers and then they quickly think, Oh, it's a scam or it's a get rich quick. Like, I mean, would you yeah. describe it as such that drop shipping is like this get rich quick scheme? No, of course not. I mean, you know, I could have, don't get me wrong. I could have left my job uh, way earlier than I did. I didn't only because I liked the, my employer. Yeah, <laughs> you know he cool. was a cool. He was a cool. Yeah, yeah he was. A, he, yeah, he was. A, he was a cool guy, and he um he needed help at that time because there was other workers who were on uh, maternity leave and stuff like that. Uh-huh. So I kind of uh, stuck it out, even though I was you know making that kind of ten x my salary. Yeah. Um, just to kind of help him out, and uh, you know we set a, a, a date where I could leave. But no, most definitely, I mean a lot of people seem to think that you know. Uh, drop shipping is a, is, a, is a get rich quick scheme or you know you've got to do x y and z and you'll start making money which in theory is correct because all you really need is the right product the right audience and the right offer and you can make you know you can you can have a winning product which can completely change your life however it's not as simple as getting it right your first time round. and a lot of people seem to um you know struggle when or, or get you know surprised when they test the first product and it doesn't work they test the third the second the, the, the second third fourth and sometimes fifth product and it still doesn't work and they're surprised how you know it's not as easy as it looks but one thing i will say is that over time experience gets the better of you mm-hmm. and a lot of people sometimes ask me is uh you know how come you can always find winning products or you know how can you know how are you able to scale without x happening or and it just it just comes down to experience you know sometimes if i see a product i've just got that good instinct that okay yep i've sold something similar to that you know i can make this kind of work or you know if something's happening with my with my adverts uh, it's like okay that scaling method didn't work let me change the ad copy change the video and let me try it scaling this way and things kind of take off so it does just come down to experience and uh, one thing I will say is that you can't learn how to do it without you can't learn how to swim without getting in the water so you have to spend the money to yeah. you know um, get good yeah wow man yeah really great point and and you touched on so so many good uh, topics there and and even taking a step back you know I, I love the way uh, what you said that you know you you could have left even earlier but you you chose this to stay just because you know you know you were able to make that choice and you know people can realize that too like whatever profession like me I'm a techie I've been you know developing you know softwares you know since the dot-com boom and and still on the cutting edge on cloud platforms and, and developing things and i choose to do that uh because i'm a techie and i love technology but mm. uh but not because you have to right so it's just like you know when you got other things going on that you know you don't need the nine to five to keep living the same lifestyle mm. that you want because you have these other things going on and that's a really mm. awesome feeling. So I'm glad I'm glad that you mentioned that. One thing that I wanted to dive into was what was the story behind deciding to teach others how to do it? So you know, now you you know you found success for yourself. What kind of what kind of mm. led into you know? Hey, I can help others. With- yeah. So I mean, I've been doing kind of ecom um, since like 2016, like I mentioned, and I only opened up. Uh, well, I only started my personal branding if you want to call it that and teaching other people uh it was late may i believe so i started my youtube channel late may 2018 so i was very oh, wow. active so and posting ago. yeah so I was, yeah so i was very active yeah so the youtube channel is only uh like yeah, it's only months eight. or something i think it's your oldest yes video. yes 
Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's probably a year old uh, this month. So we're in May now. The months are flying. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, it's very still. It's very. I'm still very still new to the personal branding and teaching kind of game. But um, the reason kind of behind it was to answer your question was very much. I realized how powerful is uh, for two reasons, uh, and I'll be 100 percent honest. The first reason, of course, is to help other people attain what it is that i've done because yeah. i'm i've not got no special skills you know i've not i'm not from a rich background i don't, didn't grow up in a you know a very big house uh, my family's not super rich i've just someone who's kind of you know learned something which i found my lane and i stay in it that's what i you know that's what i teach people find your lane what you're good at double down on it and go hard good, um, good and i've seen how kind of my life's completely changed and i think everyone who's got that determination can do exactly the same so if i can you know help other people do that then it's just kind of my way of doing charity and giving back to people because i was looking on youtube and there wasn't that much because you know back then there wasn't that much information you know there's tons of youtubers out there now but back then there wasn't <laughs> you know anyone putting out great content or there wasn't anyone doing high level numbers so i was like you know uh, there's space here for me to help other people and put out quality content yeah. so that's one thing that i've done and of course you know there's always going to people who are going to be like oh yeah but you sell courses and it's for yeah of course it brings another additional revenue stream for myself you know and that goes without saying of course um but you know there's there's massive people out there such as Ezra absolutely crushing it with um you know his his website but he still has courses Sam Ovens hell of you know loads of loads of clients but still sells his consulting course so you know it's it's a business move and it's also a move to help other people as well achieve um you know time life and, and location freedom that's so awesome yeah and yeah your youtube journey i mean that that has been something that's really great and actually let's let's dive into that so yeah, for sure you know the the story behind you know youtube because like yeah i mean like like we said i mean was within this past year and you know to even grow to you know i think it's like you're around twenty four thousand subscribers awesome and yeah. you know the video content i mean for the audience i just want to share like i mean you've been dropping some real value and doing it consistently mm -hmm. in your youtube videos uh with with quality over the past year so i mean for the audience you better catch on to that um but yeah maybe share yeah. a little bit more about you know your your youtube journey and, and everything you're doing on there yeah yeah for sure um so kind of uh, i'm very much a uh, perfectionist um so i i you know when i from the time i put out my first video it, you know it's sometimes a lot of people uh just jump on you and don't get me wrong this is one way to like i say you know you can't learn without getting in the water <laughs> but me being a perfectionist uh i had to get the right camera i had to get the right ring light i had to get the um you know the the my sound and yeah. mic done uh you know and the, i'll be honest my first youtube video probably took me about three days to put together because i was messing up i was <laughs> you know i wanted to get things out and things weren't going right yeah. or i'd edit the the whole thing and i'd be like oh damn i shouldn't have said Bad, that yeah. or yeah so the first video kind of took you know a long yeah, time it takes but, courage to do it too um, right was it, do you have any of that feeling yeah, as well yeah <laughs> it, it it does take quite a bit of time to to but now it's all second nature yeah. for me so now it's very easy to do and uh, and yeah i've been putting out you know i think one thing that the viewers like about myself and uh, the way is the way very much the way i explain things um and a lot of a lot of my students uh you know testimonials and stuff like that they they, they say you know i explain things in detail but easily understandable mm. maybe it's my english accent i'm not <laughs> sure <laughs> but uh it could, you know it could be but um but 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 yeah they they, they they just i just explain things in in a detail how i would understand uh -huh. it so so yeah and i've just been kind of putting out consistent um videos to help people you know different tips tricks strategies that are 100 percent free and like you say consistently on a weekly basis just helping people and it's been very well yeah. received because you know i've been growing uh and the numbers have been growing ever ever since so yeah it's very very humbling as well great job with that for sure yeah so i hope the audience picks up on that because i think it's definitely uh, a channel worth subscribing to because yeah you've been delivering great value with that actually you know for the audience let's let's maybe dive into talking about like some core 
uh, drop drop shipping strategies. Maybe mm-hmm. let's talk about like Facebook ads because I know uh, I mean you dive a lot into you know good techniques. Is there anything you'd like to share with the audience? Yeah, so I mean it's kind of twofold. So the well three there's kind of three states three parts when it comes to kind of drop well not so much drop shipping but e commerce uh-huh. as whole. Um so the the first thing is of course uh you know um your website, your store. Um you know making sure that your store is is on point because there's things that you control and things that you can't control and, and the things on your store is what you can you mm-hmm. can control. Um so things of like improving your conversion rate. And then moving on, we've kind of got uh, the second part is is finding products to put onto yeah. your store. Um, and there's tons of different ways to actually find products. And then finally, of course, there's uh, the Facebook adverts, so driving traffic. Um, so we can jump into, you know, any one of three of those parts. Um, yeah. If you want to pick one. And well, we can, yeah. We can... Well, actually, I mean, even – so even one of the things is, uh, you know, we you mentioned it a few times, which and I think I know it's a it's a hot topic that everyone's interested in. You know, one of the most common questions, especially for people just getting started, is like, you know, what product mm-hmm. do I start with? Mm-hmm. So like, you know, what finding a winning product? Like, do you have any tips for helping uh, yeah. the audience there? Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, yeah, you you hundred percent right. Uh, and I think one of the questions, uh, like one of the lot of common questions, is you know, what am I looking for when I when I find a winning product when I'm looking for a winning product or how do I know that it's going to be a winner or how you know what should it look what should it contain and you know all these sorts of questions so my personal advice is what I say to people is um there's and I answered the I, I, I covered these points in one of my last videos is um it kind of has to fit into one of these five categories so it have to, has to find you have to find something which not things that are easier to sell are something which a product which solves a customer's um problem you know and what i mean by that is kind of it either you know saves them money it um it saves them time so you know gadgets and you know, kitchen gadgets you know those sorts of things save people time um or it or it improves the customer's appearance or uh, you know confidence which a lot of beauty products yeah. fall into or the final point is it's unique and it's um, it has a wow effect, but it's being sold to a passionate mm-hmm. audience. And I think this is where a lot of people, a lot of new people, go wrong is that they they find they look for products on on, on AliExpress or wherever it may be, and they find unique things like cool um, phone cases and and stuff like that. But their audience is not passionate enough to to sell wow. to. So, you know, but then if you make the change and you implement it to a passionate audience, so let's say, for example, we're now selling a cat case, a cat unique case or a dog unique case, then you're selling it to a passionate audience because, of course, those people, you know, everyone knows that I'm not a personal pet owner myself, (laughs) um, but but I know from experience that they love to buy things. (laughs) So, yeah, you definitely have to, if you are finding a unique something, then sell it to a passionate audience mothers are another passionate audience grandparents you know pet lovers are, are uh, yeah. you know are passionate people so that's the criteria that people should look for in a product now in terms of where to find them or how to find them or what you're selling is you know there's tons of different ways out there to actually go and find play find um products and there's 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 tools as well to make things a little bit easier one thing that you should try to sell is um, something which is already being sold. Um, you know, instead of trying to reinvent the wheel or find that needle in a haystack that's going to be a, a winning product. So to do that or make things easier for you to find those products is to um, you know scroll through your feed and you're going to get targeted by adverts. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And on, on those sorts of adverts, you want to be finding the ones which are selling like a, a product, so not anything that's kind of like a service um you know trying to find things that which are a product and uh what you should do then is kind of save the advert like the advert comment on the advert um click on through it uh and um you know try to get pixelated as much as possible from facebook so uh, what i mean by that is hitting the landing page adding a product to your cart and then going as far as even um initiating the checkout because Facebook's going to pixelate, Facebook is going to pixel you and send that information back to 
Facebook. And um, what you're trying to do is then to get Facebook to think that you're a quote buyer so that they show you more adverse of things which are working from other drop shippers. So when you spend like a week doing this sort of thing, you'll start to see uh, a lot more um, products that are being drop shipped and a lot more drop shipping stores, you know, adverts on your feed. And you know that they're working. You can just look at their, the, you know, the comments, the, the, the likes yeah. and the shares yeah. and stuff like that. Um, yeah, just to and then kind of remodel that, whether it be improved. Oh, that great stuff for sure. And if, even diving a little deeper in, into Facebook, like even keeping up with the with the changes that's taken place with Facebook, um, like uh, the stuff about mm-hmm. the CBO and things like that. Do you think you could talk a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. So um, for those who are doing Facebook adverts now or not aware, is um, Facebook recently announced that they're moving the whole of their advertising system to CBOs. And the uh, CBO stands for Campaign Budget Optimization. And what that basically means is that you can no longer... So previously, a lot of the content that was put out there courses etc videos we're all talking about setting budgets at ad set level okay so set your ads ad set level at five dollars whereas now that's pretty much going to become redundant whereby uh, you can only set your budget at the campaign level and what then facebook does is they um, effectively spend your campaign budget so let's say it's a hundred dollars across how many ad sets you've got and they're going to try and spend it as they say as efficiently yeah. as possible. So they may only spend, you know, uh, $5 on one advert and then push uh, 50 of it to another ad set, sorry, um, you know, just to try and get yeah. you the most sales, so they say. Okay. Um, so, yeah, recently they are moving to that and they are moving to that change is being made in September yeah, of this year, 2019. Yeah, going to be like the mandatory thing, so like it's going to fully switch over? Yeah, so it will fully switch over. I mean, I'm not sure how... Uh, what they're going to do with things that I've already got, you know, ad set budgets right now. Um, so what I've recently been doing is just uh, everything that I launch now, testing wise, is all been CBO because um, very frequently, well, well, sort of in Q4, pre Q4 September times, um, we were very just using CBOs yeah. for scaling you know, and scaling products. Uh, no one was really using it for testing because it wasn't really mandatory. But once now it is becoming mandatory, um, I've shifted a lot of my focus and a lot of my new product tests to just utilizing CBOs because there's a lot of moving parts inside a CBO to uh, to get them to, you know, to, to work. And one of the, one of the standout things is that you're always going to be spending the same amount of money. So, you know, previously at ad set level, you could have, 10 ad sets at, at $10, turn them off, you'd be spending less money. Whereas a CBO, you set it at $100 when you turn the ad sets off, you're still spending $100, but Facebook's just spending that money across the <laughs> remaining ad sets that are live. Yeah. So it, some may argue there's a way that Facebook are, um, you know, uh, trying to get you to spend more money. <laughs> but uh, yeah. uh, It's a thing to learn right now. I mean, this is like cutting edge stuff that, you know, every, you know, aspiring dropshipper or professional dropshipper is is deep diving into it right now and figuring this thing out before it's mandatory in september so i'd say for the audience uh you know yeah get on your game for sure related to the cbo and figure out that i like the way that uh that you touched on the uh scaling strategy do you think you can uh touch a little bit on that yeah for sure um so Kind of now, pretty much, the there was many ways to kind of scale, and things are always changing. So I don't just have one main scaling strategy. Um, however, over the past, um, yeah, probably over the past six months, one strategy that I've been heavily using and had success with at scale is using CBOs. So with CBOs, uh, what we generally like to do is put um, the best ad sets. Uh, your best performing ad sets into a CBO. Generally, I like to have it at around about five ad sets mm. minimum. Um, five ad sets. Five ad sets. No, five ad sets maximum for scaling, generally. I like to have oh, five okay. ad sets maximum for scaling. Yeah, so five ad sets, the best five. Um, I very much set a, uh, a CBO budget of around about 200 to $300. Yeah. 
and uh, and yeah, and, and scale because those. Because at up. that time, you know that about each asset is profitable, right? So it's just like, and that's why you can give a bigger. Yeah, price. so so you, yeah, because obviously, yeah, but you know, they're only the yeah. they're the best ones. You know, they're the ones that are performing at lower budgets. So uh, in theory, of course, you know, you always have to talk in theory with Facebook because <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a wild beast. But uh, when we put those into a CBO. Um, yeah, they're going to hopefully perform the best because they're the best. They've got the best metrics. Um, so yeah, setting that budget uh, at that at two hundred to three hundred dollars and letting that run. Now, what I find with CBOs is that generally your first day uh, is not always fantastic. And um, Facebook, the CBOs, the way they work is that they're over time they get better because Facebook algorithm learns how to spend the money better on the ad sets which you provide in the sales so uh you know you may find that you know if you're trying to use cbos to scale is that your first day is not fantastic you know you may have lost money but by day three there's a much improved um you know there's a much improved performance so sometimes it is a case of riding out the storm from that first day yeah. if things don't look great and even with those uh, initial yeah, settings i noticed about- now that it even says you know it has a little blurb that is learning so it's like you know it's it's learning as you're mm. just kind of running that off that yeah way. yeah yeah for sure um and the beautiful thing about cbos is that uh you know previously with at, at ad set level when we were setting budgets to increase the budget at ad set level sometimes things would get very rocky and then kind of go um you know like uh-huh. just turn to crap uh whereas when you increase budgets on cbos things may for the for the day that after you increase it may not be as oh, great but then again okay. Yeah. Over three days, it just uh, it just works great. So you know, I'm kind of increasing, so increasing CBO budget. Possibly be um, changing like its algorithm of how to performance. Okay. Yeah. So 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 yeah, increasing budgets every uh, every two profitable days by anything from kind of like fifty percent to to a hundred percent, depending on obviously your budget and your risk management and all the other sort yeah. of metrics is is what we. Man, doing. that's awesome mm-hmm. stuff, man. Yeah, you're dropping some value bombs here for sure. You know what? One one quick yeah, question sure. that I that I wanted to touch on. Like, do you utilize any like influencer marketing? Uh, I don't personally don't do much influencer okay. marketing myself. Um, I did used to do kind of a little bit of it, but I find it's yeah. very hit and miss. And on top of that, it's yeah. not scalable. What I mean by scalable is there's only so if you may you may find a an influencer who works great for you, but you may do it once. It may work great. You may do it twice. By the third time, the audience yeah. is just bored yeah. of it. Um, you know, so you're not going to get the same return all the time. So you're constantly trying to find different um, influencers and it's not as scalable. Whereas paid traffic with Facebook, you can create lookalike audiences, you know, of different countries, of different sectors, of different percentages. It's just very much more scalable once you've got something working on Facebook um, than Instagram. That's oh, just, really good. Um, you know, personal yeah, preference. Yeah. No, really. yeah, I'm glad you explained it that way too. Yeah, that's a perfect explanation. Uh, you know, one uh, quick question, like as we were planning to uh, to do this uh, uh, podcast, I remember you mentioned that uh, that you know Justin Wall uh, very well. Uh, what's the story behind mm-hmm. that? Yeah, so Justin is my boy, <laughs> man. Justin is like previously it's, it's crazy because um, you know the the game uh, in e commerce is is very small. Even though everyone's on, like, it's like a big industry, but the the the, the kind of people who are churning yeah. out the information. It's kind of small. So um, again, when I was before I even had um, you know my, my personal branding before Beast of Ecom, um, I was kind of in groups, and uh, Justin was one of the groups oh, that I obviously cool. was in. Uh, we never really, we, no, we never really kind of used to like talk or anything like that. But um, what happened was uh, I started my personal uh, brand. I started the Beast of Ecom channel, and um, he dropped me a DM. He was like, "Yo, I see what you're doing, like your stuff, etc." And I was like, "Yeah, cool, man. I've been following you for a long time." And then what happened was um, there was uh, an event in New York mm. um, City um, oh, called okay. Breakthrough Event. Um, yeah, called Breakthrough Event. And he was speaking out there, and I was speaking out there as well, uh, along with uh, another one of my friends, another YouTuber called Jordan okay. Welch. And um, yeah, we kind of, at, at the at the event, we hooked up, and it was just a case of we just kind of clicked. Yeah. He's a super cool guy um and we you know things just kind of clicked there and then so we kind of the day after the event we uh me jordan yeah. and um me jordan and justin went to jordan's house and uh, not to jordan's uh-huh. house to justin's house in new york yeah. and we were just cracking out there we just kind of we shot some um we we hosted a, a, an instagram awesome. live yeah, people man. really loved it 
Uh, they wanted to see <laughs> more more stuff from us. So we just kind of stayed in contact there. And we're working on something very, very, very special at the moment in time. I can't really mention too much about it now. Yeah. I might get in trouble from the boys. But all three of us, uh, yeah. along with another guy, are working something. Keep an eye out for that, so, huh? So, yeah. yeah. Is that the same one with uh, with yeah, Sam Jacobs sure. there as well uh, at that event? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sam Jacobs, yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, so breakthrough Sam, event. Sam event. Yeah, previous uh, guest on the show, and Justin's a future guest on the on the show as well. So, like, you know, really awesome stuff. And yeah, I mean, I love his Click Funnels plaque. I mean, I'm working on getting one of my own. And uh, but yeah, it's just you know mm-hmm. an awesome thing for sure. And yeah, man, a great story to yeah. share. It's cool when you see, you know, all the people that are crushing it and then getting together to collaborate, to do something even bigger and better. You know, I think it's just awesome for everybody. You know, it's a win-win for for everybody. Thanks for yeah. sharing that for sure. Well, hey, this is awesome stuff, man. And I, I want to give you some exposure for the stuff that you're working on. So I know that you have a course and that you've been doing mentoring, but you want to talk about some of the latest stuff you've been working on? Yeah, for sure. So uh, I mean, the, 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 the latest thing that I'm working on now is right, right at this moment in time is the, uh, the thing. I've got, full, I've got a few smaller stores, which are just kind of like long term play branded white labeled stuff. Um, but the thing that we're working on right now for the people and for the viewers, to help them is um, something that we're putting together like a collective me Justin Jordan and uh, Vince Wang I'm not sure if you guys have heard of him at all but uh, another uh, another guy who's um, decent in the uh, the e-commerce game super chill guy oh, super cool. yeah, informal um, <laughs> you know and helping people out so yeah as for put, yeah as for putting together something which is gonna hopefully change the whole well not even hopefully <laughs> I know it's just gonna change everything it's gonna help so many people um so yeah we're, we're working on that and that's kind of the latest thing at this moment in time that uh, myself and we're putting quite a bit of um time into it but we're very much close to announcing what it uh-huh. is or giving glimpse of what it is so by next week we're hoping that we've um we're working on a branding okay. right about now that's what our, our weekly calls have been about yeah and i think this episode um, might then release around the same time frame so try to keep the timing out for yeah, that. yeah yeah for sure that'd be pretty good so what well, yeah once we've come to once we've got the branding all well we're gonna uh, announce what it is um but it's, it's gonna be yeah, like a, a whole thing that everyone can kind of turn to and really help people grow uh you know grow their businesses change lives it's just going to be immense so that's the i'd love to be able to tell more about it but yeah, unfortunately no, it's that's still cool. a bit yeah. under wraps hey it's something for people to keep an eye out it's be, uh, and it's a reason why they need to follow you so what's the, what's the, what's the best way for the audience to follow everything that you're doing yeah for sure so i'm pretty much beast of ecom on all platforms um and again obviously i have got a course out so if anyone does want to learn personally from myself then um then ecom beast 2.0 is is my course um and of course my youtube channel but um yeah if you want to find me on youtube it's uh beast of ecom just type that in no doubt one of my videos will pop up instagram yeah. uh beast of ecom and uh, again beast of ecom on um on facebook and if the people want to join the free facebook mastermind group i've got a free facebook mastermind group um then they can just go to um beast of ecom shopify mastermind type that in on facebook okay. and that'll we'll be come sure up. to include all the links um, in, in the show yes, notes as well uh, but yeah, thanks for mentioning that. And then what's yeah. the URL for the for the course, the 2.0 course? Oh yeah, so it's ecombeastcourse.com. Okay. That's it, ecombeastcourse. Yeah, E-C-O-M-B-E-A-S-T-C-O-U-R-S-E, ecombeastcourse.com. Simple as that. And uh, there'll be a... Yeah. Uh, there'll and be maybe even while we're and, talking about yeah. your course, um, like even some of the... And I noticed you've been posting stuff even on your stories and things about even your student success stories. You want to share a little bit about that, some of the student success? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure, man. So we've... Um, one guy quit his nine-to-five job. I mean, there's 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 guys who are kind of low-key and there's guys who yeah. have to be kind of public about things. But uh, the guys who have been public about things are, are, are doing, you know, great. I mean, one guy uh, filmed a test testimonial video and uh, he was literally took it outside of his job and he just literally <laughs> handed in his notice he made ninety thousand uh ninety thousand dollars um from january this this wow. month this year yeah. sorry and uh and yeah that was he wasn't even making that a year so he just thought wow. you know uh, yeah again it's just yeah. the whole thing of laptop lifestyle <laughs> there was another uh, yeah there was a, a, another guy and it's not just everyone in yeah. there i've got students yeah. all the way around the world so um uh maxim who's based in in paris uh him and his girlfriend do it together really they run cool. their stores together 
And uh, he was doing like, yeah, he was doing like eight thousand dollars a month. He joined the course, and um, wow. yeah, he made six yeah. figures. And I'm glad you and mentioned that even figures. like as a couple, because I mean, you know, couples can do this, individuals can do this. And then what I talk about it that most people don't, because I have a family of a wife and two boys, one in middle school, one in high school. And but mm -hmm. I, I, I get them involved. So I say treat treat it like a family business. So everybody, everybody has like their yeah. own business and we're sitting around the dinner table, you know, t excited and talking about what products are popping off. And it's like. You know, it's a family business and you mm -hmm. could, you know, you could take it as big as you want or keep it as simple as you want, but it's just a really awesome thing. And one thing I do say as well is, is that it's funny how this sounds is I don't really do this for the money. Of course, the money is great, but it's more yeah. for the lifestyle because I'd be more than happy to make, you know, just a standard wage, um, yeah, you know, but still day. have the opportunity not to be able to wake up in the morning or, or travel to a country and not have to give notice and not do commuting <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> Yeah. you know all those sorts of things so um you know it, it, you really don't have don't come into the game and see me doing all these crazy numbers and think oh i have to do these crazy numbers you know it, it's great to get to this point or get to a point like this i always wanted to get to kind of you know there's still people doing bigger numbers than me and i'm still striving for that but you know the it, it's more of the 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 time freedom the just being able to live life on your own yeah time, you want to enjoy really, it yeah, it yeah. Be, it's for thing. sure man hey this is great stuff and you get you gave a lot of great tips and I want to thank you for your time. And actually, I just uh, remembered, is it okay mm -hmm. to uh, follow up with you later in the year to see how things are going? Yeah. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that'll be great. We'll break yeah, it back yeah, on yeah, the for show. Yeah, sure, for sure. Ah, great stuff. Um, well, I want to give you a chance to uh, to give some closing remarks uh, to the audience. So I'll let you run with it. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, yeah, it's been, it's been fantastic. Uh, it's been a pleasure to be able to share my experience with uh, with you guys. And, uh, you know, like I mentioned, I think anyone who's got a laptop and got internet connection can, uh, you know, change their life. Again, I'm not from a, I've not got a, a special background or special skills. I didn't grow up rich. Uh, but you know your life can turn 360 once you once you put in the work and 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 if you're never going to be able to learn anything if you you know if you don't get in the water and swim so take action um, if you are listening to this take action no matter how big or small it is even if it's a case of actually just you know registering a domain um, you know looking for products but take consistent action every single day because that's all that success is made up of is just small um consistent action over a period of time and um always just stay in your lane don't get too fixated on what everyone else is doing just stay in your lane keep working away and no doubt uh success will come to you so uh, i wish you guys all of the best and uh, reach out to me if you uh if you want so some awesome some brother man i'm clapping right now action 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 and stay in your lane yeah. uh totally and that's what it takes man so awesome hey the beast of ecom you guys got to check him out be sure to follow him and his youtube channel blowing up uh great stuff there so be sure to, to check him out and find out more about harry coleman the beast of ecom all right man brother hey this was great great episode and let's keep in touch yeah dude for real i appreciate it so I want to thank you for listening to this episode of Tech Money Talks. I hope everything was helpful and thought-provoking and somewhat entertaining. If you want to learn more about this topic, please let me know so I know what to focus on in future episodes. My goal is to teach people how to make money with the opportunities that technology can bring. And if you like this episode, please show your support by subscribing, leaving an awesome review. And in the meantime, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. My tag name is Tech Money Talks. Thanks again. I'll talk to you in the next episode. Peace.